it's and, still alive. And it has a decent bottom. Yeah, and there are a couple of different ways there, and I just thought I'd show you another way, uh, which is where you can take the proper way. Right. No, 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 it's down. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfectly popular. I don't know where it is. Oh, I think it's outside. You had a wiggle. Yeah, I did. You had a wiggle. Yeah, the thing, what I did was to just have a flat join, so you know, the clothes are sitting on top of And I, I mean, when I started making bigger pots, I did that, because it just seemed simple and you could locate the two together. But it's again where the raw glazing shows you up because if you don't get that really well joined together and when you glaze it, the water will actually go in between the two and it'll come apart. Okay. So what I do what I've done for many years is I will throw the top of the pot so that it's got a rim that's very sharp like so. The bottom of the pot has a rim that's got a V notch in it. So when you put them back together again, yeah. you've got a join like that, which when you re-throw it, makes a very strong join. So you're looking for kind of a subtle uh, V, because if it's really big, if it's a really big gouge, then you'll end up with a big bulge in the part, won't you? So you want it to be quite a quite a gradual one. Yeah. Well, the idea is that you that your um, the V you've cut in the top that you've thrown in the top. Uh, when it fits in there, means that the wall is the same thing mm. as, as the rest it's, of it. It's quite hard to do. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is too that if you if you've just got <laughs> a, a flat bit sitting one on top of the other, they don't have to match so exactly. When you do that, they really have got so you've got to measure them very carefully so they really go together well. The thing about the join use is again it. My way of doing it is you put the two together, then you re-throw the whole thing. And unless you've sort of wildly overdone it, you should be able to throw out that little bit of thickness. And the throwing it again, again, means that's really well joined. So do you leave it thicker than the pot, the, the bottom pot and the top pot, I suppose, to join together? And then you're expecting to do another another pull? Not much these days, no. no. You, you, what, you're, what you're expecting to do is to change the shape rather than lift the clay, it's a question of forming it. But in that forming, you're going over that join and it's really well worked out. Okay. But there, there are a number of other ways that people do it. I mean, Sven Baer, who's very famous for his great big pots, he will throw a big pot, say, of 30 pounds of clay, a big bowl if he's making a big jar, put it to one side, let it dry a bit, and then add a coil of clay on the top and throw that, leave it again to dry a bit, and throw another clay. So his workshop has got in about five wheels, so he can work on a number of pots at the same time. He, 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 de he generally finishes that bowl first as well, so he'll turn it over and make sure the bottom's bashed in and he's smoothed out the bottom, and then he'll put it onto a board again, which he'll fix onto the wheel. Yeah, so he's, 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 he's and, he, and that's that much more drier than these two hmm. pots that I'd be putting together. Because once you put two together, you can put three together. You, you did a really big stack here, room. didn't you, one time? Mm. I did. I did. I did well, you were testing a, a wheel, and it, you were trying to get it to the. Uh, yeah, I did. A, I did. A <laughs> big, what about? Big wall, but you can. You know, once you can do, you really can go on doing. Mm. This this method is um, one that was used um, in the southern states of uh, America, like when they were making these pots that they salted beans in or various other foodstuffs. And you start with one piece of clay, and you just you throw the top. Oops, <laughs> and we get stuck here. I've done my back in. <laughs> um, so you throw the top of the pot out of one piece of clay, put it to one side, then throw the base, and then put the top straight back on again. So, what you, weight of clay are you working this, with? This is just five pounds. Right. I didn't think I'd stretch you too far. Peter. Would you would you ever <laughs> throw the top first, so that then you can leave the bat on the wheel when you do the bottom? I'm throwing the top first. Oh, you are. Oh, the, yeah. okay. This is the top. <laughs> and that yes. was a big piece of clay. I thought that would be the bottom. No, well, I'm not throwing a very big pot. And the principle works whether it's a very big pot or not, but... Five pounds is... Five pounds is, you know, that makes a... That can make quite a difficult pot. 
Mm. Well, presumably, if you throw the top, you then can kind of measure. What was that? Two and a half kilos. Yeah. In modern uh, Because I think it's easy to adjust the shape of the bowl bottom bit to fit the top. I'm probably talking rubbish. Mm. Oh. It's easier to measure the bottom than the top. You can't really use the calipers on the top first, very easily, because you've got the bottom of it you want to. Oh, I see, you're doing that one. Ah, oops. That's going to be the. But you can't do the V thing that way either. Ah, but that's only the. So is that the bottom? It's a different method, but it's a different method. I think we have a, a film Watch and learn. From a potter by the name of Vimeo Meadows from the um, Southern States of America. I bet that'd be a good one too. I think I've got. Hmm. I think I could show that at tea time. Hmm. That's not the um, weird man who made funny heads. Yeah, that was his son. Yes, yeah, he right. that. <laughs> The weird man no, who made. Sure about that, <laughs> 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 oh, this seems very odd. Yeah, I, I mean, when I got to go there, the father had died. Yeah, so he was, uh, yeah, he was, he was, he was very weird. Yeah, we were told when you go to say, see, see, park facing out. That was the, first <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> the next thing is. You greet him like an old friend, you, so he thinks he's met you before. <laughs> well, actually, when we got there, he wasn't there either. It was his brother who wasn't um, that strange. Yeah, it's very interesting, Kat, that, that uh, they're sort of buried in the backwoods of America. Uh, these traditional potters working, you know, as they would have done hundred or more years ago here, but I've all died out here, but I've managed to carry on in the backwards. So and in that film... why have they died out in this country? That's Sorry? That, why have they died out in this country? That was the question. I think <laughs> um, uh, people got wealthier, didn't need to buy these Go to IKEA. Use them. Mm -hmm. There, there's you know, a lot more rural poverty, um, and, 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 and they had the, the space. You know, here that's you know, one of the things that when I see modern potters, you know, they're working in sheds and gardens. Mm -hmm. I can afford this space now. You know, luckily, I started early enough when it was about. Which kind of means that you can't really pot, so people can't pot in this way, because they, you need the space to have that clay and to have the wood and everything. Um, whereas in America you could still carry on that way. And they, they had a, a clay mill, they called it. Was powered by a mule which walked round and round the circle. And it's basically a pillar with blades on it, and you put the clay in, and it was a cut the clay, it's like a pug mill, vertical pug mill, but the clay kind of went out and, and through this machine. <laughs> There's another guy, his his um, his mule died, so he just attached his tractor to it. With his tractor. <laughs> and they made they made pots of storing food in, you know, jugs, you know, they, pitchers, what we would call a jug, they call a pitcher. Yeah. What we would call a bottle, they call a jug. So there were yeah. jugs made for whiskey and other alcohol. Uh, they, just, they used local clays, their glazes were made out of wood ash, crushed glass and clay, and that was kind of very soot and low. Right, um, what am I doing here? Talking too much. Okay. So I've got to make this top to match that uh, rim that I've 
made. Yeah, the film that I got when the old guy's talking about throwing like this, um, he says it, his father did it because his arm was uh, injured and he couldn't bend his elbow enough so he couldn't make these tall pots. But it's not so. Lots of other people did it because they simply wanted to make a taller pot uh, more quickly. Mm. And it's interesting too. This thinking about. Uh, Techniques coming about because of the clay, the firing, the blazing, all the rest of it. Um, you know, Japanese clays are kind of they're derived from primary clays, whereas this is a secondary clay. This is granite that has been broken down while in the mass, turned into China clay. That China clay has been worn away, carried by rivers. And deposited in lakes and various places, so it becomes a secondary clay. The, the clays in Japan are like primary clays, so they're um, quite coarse and non plastic. So often they would do things because the clay really wasn't plastic enough to do the, the kind of things I'm doing with this clay. And then some years ago, Jenny and I went to Portugal and we went to Evora. Am I going to attack correctly? Uh, which is this uh, town sort of, kind of about a third of the way up on the sp or in Portugal on the Spanish border and, and quite near there there's a village called San Pedro de Corval and there's about 30 potters working in this village making earthenware the clay is just appalling whether they, when they first started making pots say there was a good clay and they just used it up but went on making pots I don't know you kind of think if you came across this stuff, you would not try and make pots like this. And there, where they make big pots, they will start with a big lump of clay and they will throw the top third of the pot on this lump of clay, complete, I mean, exactly as it's going to be at the end. They will then open up the next third of the clay and throw the middle of the pot, as it's going to be. Without detaching the top. Without detaching, isn't it? Yeah. And then, finally, open up the bottom third and make the bottom of the pot. And if you saw these pots for sale in the market, there is no way that you can tell that. You know, just, somebody's just thrown a pot. But this clay is, is like, uh, because I don't have any Portuguese, they didn't have any English, I said, I'm a potter. You know, right, they put you on the wheel <laughs> to see what you could do face with this stuff. And it was like trying to throw uh, with sponge cake. Mm. And, and they demonstrated how they made a handle. Well, they pull the handle, but they attach the bit of clay to the bench. They have one pull, pretty much one pull. Then they laid the handle down on the bench and compressed it with the heel of the hand. Then picked it up, and pulled it again, which made it a bit mm. bigger. Then laid it down again and then compressed it again. Again, if you saw that handle on a pot, no way would you know that all this work had gone into it. They also made these pans that you get all over Europe, which is basically flat bottom bowl, mm. sloping wall, heavy mm. rim on it. They made those in three processes. They threw a ring of clay, they put it to one side, they threw the base on the wheel, they then took the ring of clay, put it back upside down on the base and through the walls. But again, if you saw that in the market, no way. That's, that, that all that work had gone into it no, because just because this clay was so odd mm. so these techniques come about um, because you, you know, people are trying to work with them. and again potters you know, have always been poor they wouldn't um, if you had a poor clay like that you, know, you wouldn't go and buy some from somewhere further away and get it transported you just got on and used what you had and I, I still kind of wonder how people discover the early porcelains. You know, that book I had out yesterday, Five Stones, 
this Australian potter travelled around the world finding all the original porcelain uh, stones, because porcelain is made just from one stone. And, and those stones tend to be, they had no clay in them. The plasticity simply came from mica uh, in those stones. Uh, and often to, 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 the, the clay had to be, uh, the stones had to be ground. And then they had to, they were often much better left for quite some years before we could use the material. It's so soft and you're working on it, it's not necessarily it just you know, it together again. Now, you know, if, if I wanted one of those, I'd have thrown it mm. in one piece, of it, but it, it's ready to show you the, the technique. And the thing is, if you can handle three pounds of clay but want to make a four pound pot, you know, this is the kind of technique that you can use. Um, That, that, when you join those two then, that wasn't when you were talking about mm. that thing, was it? No. Yeah. No, because that's your, uh, yeah, it's much bigger pot. Okay. Okay. You, you throw the thing in the rest of it. Um, this, because you're putting it together straight away and you've worked it a bit, um, you know, that's, that's, you wouldn't be able, if I tore that apart, you wouldn't be able to see the joy in that. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's, yeah, it's kind of very really simple, but mm -hmm. it can be uh, very effective and, and very, very useful in different ways. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm.